Now comes my last part, and that is, how does air drag influence trajectories? And that is also part of your assignment, but I'm going to help you a little bit with that. In your assignment number four, I'm asking you to evaluate quantitatively the motion of an, an object in liquid, but I give that object an initial speed in the x direction. And then there's the liquid below. Then gravity is there and there's that initial speed. If there were no drag, then this of course would be a parabola. And the horizontal velocity would always be the same. There would never be any change. But that's not the case now. Because of the resistive forces, because of the drag by the liquid, the object is going to get a velocity in this direction, so there's going to be a component of the resistive force opposing it. It has a speed in this direction, so there's also going to be a component of the resistive force in this direction. And that will decrease this speed, this component in the x direction. And so you can already see that the curve that you're going to see is a very different one. It's going to look something like this. And then ultimately, there is nothing left of this component, and ultimately, when you go vertically down, you have the terminal speed that you can find from dropping an object just into the liquid vertically. So that's something you're going to deal with in your assignment number four, and this is exclusively done in regime one, because we have an object with liquid. And with liquid, you almost always work with regime one. Suppose I take a tennis ball and I throw up a tennis ball in 26100. There is air drag on that tennis ball. In the absence of any air drag, I would get a nice parabola which would be completely symmetric. I throw it up with a certain initial speed, V, call it V zero, I don't care, and the horizontal component would never change. This would be V zero X, would always be the same. But now, with air drag, you're going to see that there's going to be a force, an air drag force in the y direction. If the object goes up in this direction, then there will be a resistive force component in the y direction. And since it has a speed in this direction, there will also be a resistive force in the x direction. So this speed is going to be eaten up in the same way that this component was going to be eaten up. This component is going to suffer. It will not stay constant throughout. And as a result of that, you're going to get a trajectory that looks more like this. It's asymmetric. Clearly you don't reach the highest point that you would have reached without air drag for the reason that this resistive force in the y direction will not allow it to go as high, that's obvious. You don't go as far as you would without air drag for obvious reasons that this resistive force is going to kill this speed, but you also will get asymmetry in the curvature and I want you to see that. I call this point O, this point P, and let's call this point S. So what I will do is I will throw up a tennis ball and then I will throw up a styrofoam ball. And the styrofoam ball has very closely the same radius as the tennis ball. That means the resistive force is the same on both, because the resistive force is only dictated by r squared and by v, r squared v squared, remember? However, this has a way larger mass than this one. And even though the resistive forces will be closely the same if I throw them up with the same initial speed, it has a way larger effect on a smaller mass than on a larger mass. F equals ma, right? So on a very large mass, the resistive force will have a much lower effect than on the smaller mass, even though the resistive forces are about the same. So try to see that the tennis ball is very close to an ideal parabola. You will not even see any effect of asymmetry. It will not be the case for the styrofoam, though. So look at the tennis ball first. 
I should really do it here. Did it look more or less symmetric? Okay, now I'll try this one. Did it look asymmetric? Could you see it? Are you just saying yes or you really saw it? Let me do it once more, I can throw it back. So now it should curve like this and then sort of come down like that. You ready? You see the asymmetry? Okay, now comes my last question. I'm going to ask you the following, and there's a unique answer to that. I want you to think about it, and I want you to be able to give that answer with total hundred percent confidence. When this object goes from O to P, that takes a certain amount of time. When it goes from P to S back to the ground, that takes also a certain amount of time. Is this time the same as this time? Or is this time longer than this time? Or is this time shorter? Think about it. See you Friday.